Good afternoon, chat. Site 42 staff, welcome to Dr. Sherman's office hours. As you can see, we're doing things a little differently today. I'm not at my day job today, but instead I have a solid, I'd say 45 minutes before I have to get onto my next task for the day. And so here I am in the Site 42 recording lodge and we are gonna do a couple upgrades to the stream. For instance, I can wear some Site42 merch because I'm at home. Uh, I can see your chats better because I don't just have the mobile. I'm in the office, so I'm using live uh, YouTube on my browser so I can see you guys' chats fly. And wow, chat still flies even when uh, I can see it from here. That's great. But the good news is I can see it a little bit better and I can see super chats a lot better from this spot. So when I'm out in the field, it's a little more difficult. There's a time limit on seeing super chats, but here I can see it a lot clearer. So I'll do my best to answer those along the way. Hello to so many of you all at once, my word. All right, the questions are coming in. So uh, just before we talk about some question stuff, I wanna give you guys a little spiel, a little bit of what I've been thinking about Site42 because I've been on a long hiatus. Things have been crazy for the channel. I had a fun vacation in July. I had a emergency bad vacation in August. And then as soon as I got back, entirety of September, October, and November are all stuff for this play that I'm working on. And so with that in mind, obviously Site42 has been what I call, and has been on what I call low power mode. Low power mode means that my editors, Synth and Charles, are keeping, pardon my cough. <coughs> yeah, part of it is I've just been sick. Terrible. I'm sure it's some anomalous illness that will kill me in three days unless I blink 242 times a minute in between now and then. So, God help me. Also, we have 242 viewers here, which I just said that number randomly. I did not think that that was the exact viewer count. That was a coincidence, but neat. Also, all y'all need to like, uh, like the stream because 242 viewers and only 21 likes, shameful. The foundation staff would be ashamed of that. Site42 staff is better than that. Where was I? Yeah, so the editors, Synth and Charles, are keeping a lot of the, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Content running. They're uploading the shorts. They're keeping the hallelujah, amen, guest readers. They're recording and editing articles. So we have our Sunday readings. Synth is making... Uh, making great use of compilations to keep some videos coming in, in the channel in the meantime. But I've been thinking a lot about what I'm going to do when I have time to get back to full-time content. And so here's two things that came to mind just this last week. Uh, one of them is that, you know what SCP needs? SCP needs a group of interest that's basically like the Hunter's Network for S from Supernatural in SCP. They're like the GOC, they wanna destroy anomalies, but they're like the UIU, that they have no budget. They're running things out of bars and truck stops. They got back rooms with conspiracy boards and notebooks full of entity lore. And so they're running around trying to hunt anomalies. But that would be so interesting when you have these low level characters running around and doing their best and they encounter the Foundation agents. They encounter different groups of interest in having to deal with them. You get really good character interactions and people sometimes, you know, their hunter's job is to hunt anomalies, but there's always drama when they want to keep an entity alive. I fell in love with a vampire. No. So yeah, the reason I bring that up is because one of the very fun ideas I have for a future SCP show that I really, really want to make is I want to make a show that's about SCP Foundation agents. Not the mobile task force, but agents. The guys who go out in suits or casual wear and they go find anomalies and talk to people and they do the recon work. And so my feeling is it would be in the same vein as something like Warehouse 13 the Foundation sends out agents to a site. They have to find the anomaly that's in town. They have to deal with it. Again, maybe they cross over with different groups of interest. I have this dream of an episode where the agents 
uh, end up in the same town as the Global Occult Coalition, and their way to stop this anomaly from getting out is to nuke the town, or at least bomb the town, and kill everyone in, civilians included. And so the Foundation has a 48-hour time limit or something to get this anomaly and contain it before the GOC decides to take it all out. That episode would be so much fun to make. I would love to make an episode where the agents, I assume there's like two or three of them in the group, and they have interpersonal drama. Maybe there's a love triangle or something. There's always a love triangle in these kind of soap opera-like shows. But I want one of them to fall in love with someone in the town, maybe the entity of the week, if it's an anomalous person. But at the end of the episode, there's some sort of mimetic hazard, and the only way to save everyone is to amnesticize everyone. And that means we lose all the romance and the stuff that they fell into. And it's tragic, and it's feelings. God, all that drama. I love that capital D drama. Also, I missed that during the spiel. Uh, thank you, Purple Chessire One, for the sticker. Appreciate the dono to the cause. Uh, Zierdrin, good to see you in the chat, members. So yes, that is just one of the many show concepts that I want there to be in the skip verse. If we get what I like to call, as Markiplier put it, unfathomable money. Because think about it. Uh, right now, we live in a world where there's a Five Nights at Freddy's movie coming out, A24 is doing the back rooms, and Markiplier is just making an Iron Lung movie. So, yeah, I'm planning these ideas for when Site 42 gets there, because we're about to hit 300, or sorry, we're about to hit 400k subs before the end of the year. We, we did 100,000 subscribers in the last month. Think about that. It took us seven years to get 100K, and it's taken us nine months to get the next 300K. So I'm hitting the ground running. I'm planning ahead. I'm talking to film crews out here in San Francisco. I'm talking to film crews in Florida, because what we're going to be is the producers. I want to be a producer of a big old Broadway show. Except it's not a Broadway show, unless we do The Hanging King's Tragedy, because then maybe it will be a Broadway show. But no, I want to collaborate, use our platform to fund all of these awesome projects, and then we'll be the distribution center, and we'll send them out there. <gasps> okay, so, all of that fun, thinking ahead stuff that I just had to get off my chest because I've been so excited about it this week. Now, we are here for the q and I've got approximately, I'd say, 35 to 45 minutes. So, I'm watching your questions in the chat now. Do we have a Discord server? Yes, but you have to find it. It's a mystery. Just like the SCP Wiki... <laughs> oh my god. My, my phone holder bounces, so I'm sorry when it, this phone bounces and my camera goes all over the place every time I touch this. Uh, Shizzling, thank you for your first super chat. And what would happen if SCP-173 looked in a mirror? So I am pretty sure my hypothesis is that uh, SCP-173 would not be stopped by a mirror. That is my hypothesis. I do not know if we have tested this in the wiki, but I do know that... To finish my answer, I do not know if that has been tested on the wiki, and it would be interesting to find out by searching something like SCP-173 and Mirror in Google and seeing what comes up. The reason I just grabbed the bridge of my nose aggressively is because... Oh, you're quite welcome, Shizzling, and thank you for your second dono for the thank you. Thank you back and forth all day. Um... The reason I grab the bridge of my nose is because I see my moderator desk spreading the skip daddy in the chat. It was just him a minute ago, but I've seen like three more. Desk. 346 people in the chat right now. Welcome. And 140 likes. We're less than 50%. Fix that up. 
My bank account looks... Doo -doo -doo, is broken. I bought a Plague Doctor Halloween costume. Oh my. Plague Doctor Halloween. Uh, do not be the cure. Do not be caught by our agents. That would not go well for you. Oh, I can stop the chat here on desktop. I love this. Lemon disc, can I leave my cell? If you're in a cell, the answer is no. Can I kill the nicest SCP if I'm allowed to? We will not allow that. We at the Foundation secure, contain, and protect. We do not destroy, destroy, and destroy. If you want to destroy anomalies, join the Global Occult Coalition. But if you're here at the Foundation, that's not how we roll. Yes, this chat is speedy AF. I couldn't even see who said that. But thankfully, I can stop it here on desktop so I can actually read your questions, Lord. Wonderful. I love the technology we have. Oh, I saw a question there. What if you typed anti-Scarlet King juice into the coffee machine? I would wonder if the Scarlet King... Anything about it could be summoned since it currently does not reside in our dimension. I would think that for that to work, the Scarlet King would have to be here, and then we'd already be in trouble. Joseph, thank you for your first dono to the Site42 cause. And I was SCP-049 last year for Halloween. Oh, and you stayed out of containment somehow. Congratulations. That's very lazy of our security. We'll have to discipline them. Is there any way for the Foundation to deal with extremely fast entities? Like blinding speed or lightning speed? Asking attempt eight. Well, Mashin, uh, lucky for you, I can stop the stream and see some questions. Although, there's so many that I, there's no guarantee I'll see yours unless it's a super chat. But, for your question, you, my good friend, should check out SCP-3... No... Uh, SCP-5886, because that's at least one example of the SCP Foundation dealing with a speedster. And the reason I can claim that in my head so quickly is because I wrote that one. And so James Biggio, or Jim Biggio, is a speedster class anomaly in Foundation containment, although he escaped at the end, so take that for what it's worth. But go check out SCP-5886 if you want to hear something about that. Jump into the chat. They can't contain us all. Everyone dress up as an SCP. We can contain you all. It will just take time. Just little. We'll get you. We'll get you. Don't think you can get away from us. We'll get you. I successfully escaped containment. What are you going to do now? You're going back in the box. Celebrate your victory for now. You're not going to last very long. These anomalies get so confident. They escape for five minutes. They think they're going to get free. It's not how it works. What is the most... Where was it? What is the most OP SCP that you know? Well, bruh, I got an answer for you on that one. The most OP SCP is SCP-3812. A voice behind me. Because it is specifically meta-written to be... Unpower scalable. It's supposed to, it, it messes with the power scalers because it is meta outside its universe, outside its universe. So it, ex it exists in every universe. So like if you exist in the first dimension and then the second dimension, then the third dimension, well, that's one thing. But if you exist in real life, then you exist in a TV show in real life. And then in a TV show, in a TV show, in real life, those meta layers of narrative... SCP-3812 accidentally encompassed all of them. It exists in all layers. And what that means is that it is now higher on a narrative level than even its author. So its author can't stop it. It can stop its author. It is now the author of its author. So any entity that power scales outside the universe, well, 3812 trumps that because it's so meta. The only thing that could pop possibly stop it is crazy other meta entities like Popeye or something. I saw the death battle on that and that kind of thing. But even then, in our universe, Popeye is not that meta because it exists inside its own lair. And so 
The only thing we could probably beat it is Popeye, is what I'm saying. 3812 trumps everything except Popeye. 547 chatters. That is our most record chat here at the Site 42 Red Division Dr. Sherman office hours. Make sure to like the stream so we get those likes up to matching our viewer count. Now I see a super chat here from Fable Rain. Thank you for your first dono to the Site 42 Red Division. And how would we join the SCP Foundation? Also, oh, hi, Dr. Sherman. Well, hello, Fable. And the answer to your question is, to join the SCP Foundation, you very much don't apply. Because, of course, no one knows about the SCP Foundation. They're all just whiling away at their normal lives, becoming celebrated nuclear physicists and the top of their field researchers, or maybe top of the field military soldier people. But basically, you gotta be like, Men in Black, the best of the best of the best, sir. And from there, we gonna find you because we find everybody. And if we think you're worthy of the cause, you will get a call, a mysterious call to a mysterious location. And that is how you will end up in the foundation. You don't call us, we call you. Willow, thank you for your super chat. First one to the Site 42 Red Division. If Scarlet King invades, as a last measure, would it be possible to put slash extract waste from 999 into the refining machine to make multiple 999s? Well, I mean, based on the lore as it is in, uh, what's it called? New Job? The SCP tale New Job? Uh, only one 999 is going to be necessary. So we, as long as we have 999, which we do, Scarlet King's Toast. It's fine. Unless you look in the universes where that's not true. And then, if you look at my video, Scarlet King Declassified, here at the Site 42 Red Division, then it's a couple years old, so it's missing some newer stories. But uh, there are some entities above the Scarlet King. Uh, the All Death is one of them, or the Old Death, the All Death, I think. And then the. Uh, there were seven people slash entities that joined together and uh, were able to stop it using the seven spears that were part of its whole lore. And so it's it's pretty tough, but it, it, I assume it's all gonna be fine. It's all gonna be fine. It's not an XK waiting to happen at all. Go about your day. Uh, Willow, that was your question, so thank you for your dono. Joseph, what if you refuse to join? Now that you know about it, what will happen? So, I got two answers to that. If you refuse the call to join the foundation, then there are three ways, actually, this could go down. If we asked you to apply and you just, like, didn't show up and we didn't tell you who we were, well, then you just missed a job opportunity. It's no big deal. But, if you, we did tell you about the foundation and you refused, then we would have to amnesticize you. Easy peasy. You forget, you go about your life, no big deal. But if, if you A, knew about the foundation, and B, you ran so we could not amnesticize you, a one second interruption. Preston, thank you for your first donor of the Site 42 Red Division. Since you didn't ask a question, I'm just saying hey. So thank you kindly for helping us out. So, if you ran, now here's the problem. I know there's a tale about this on the wiki and I can't find it, no matter how much I search. So if anyone finds this tale, please tell me. But what had happened was this grizzled old FBI agent or something got a call to join the foundation several times and he refused several times. And because of that, uh, and then he went on the run. And so he went on the run and he was trying not to get drafted into the SCP Foundation. And eventually, they caught him and they made him a D-class. Because he refused and he ran. And so they were just like, no, you're not going to stay with us. You're going to try and not be anesthetized. Well, good riddance. So, I can't find that tale. I would love to because I remember it being really compelling. Uh, he had to like hide in a shack in the woods and stuff like that. Good stuff. All right, catching up on Super Chats. Pancake Dragon. How much would I have to pay you to read my SCP article on YouTube or TikTok? Great question. So, when it comes to readings on the channel, the one rule we have is that it has to be officially on the SCP wiki. 
on one of the language branches, whether it's the American branch or the one of the foreign language branches, it has to be an official SCP to make it onto Site-42. That's just a policy we have because it opens it up to too much wide of a net and questioning if we go unofficial. So there are channels that do unofficial readings, uh, especially for commission rates, but that is a, we try to keep it in the official canon or our interpretations, just not to get too crazy with it. Um, now, paying to read your article, uh, for people who have official articles who want that. Commission rates go on a sort of a hourly rate. Uh, we are, uh, I am a freelance voice actor. I work with an education app. I get paid hourly. Uh, the hourly rate for voice acting is pretty expensive. So for SCP authors, I usually cut you a deal, but it depends on the length of your article. So that would be something where you approach me and check it with me there. I see your super chats. I'm gonna be right back in just a second. It's getting very warm in this recording booth. I'm gonna turn on my AC, be right back. Whoa, my face is turning red and I'm starting to sweat. All right, let's catch it up, catch it up. Uh, unknown Uwu, how would one know if they are an SCP? Asking for a friend. Well, freaky powers, abnormal anomalous uh, appearance. These are the kind of things we normally look for. Uh, if you're an X-Man, we're probably, you're probably anomalous and we're probably gonna catch you. Now remember, you're not an SCP unless you are contained and given an SCP designation number. So if you are out in the wild, you are anomalous. You are not an SCP until you are caught. So honestly, if you are anomalous, being an SCP is not great unless you decide that you want to live in a facility for some reason and be imprisoned against your will. Although I guess it's not against your will at that point. If that's what you're into, I'm not here to kink shame. Okay. Uh, Fable, how would you recommend trying to classify new entities we find and how would we know which numbers to use? So, entity, when you say entity, that means some sort of animal or person. If it is a living creature, or sentient, we normally do not classify it uh, safe because if it can move, it can act, it's usually gonna try and get out. So it would be Euclid or above at that point. But I mean, there's also inanimate objects that are Euclid and stuff as well. Anything that's hard to contain, because remember the object class is containment difficulty, not danger. So knowing which numbers to use, this is actually very easy. You see, when you go on the SCP wiki and on the sidebar, you see SCPs by series. And so when you go into the newest series, series eight, which has SCP-7000 to SCP-7999, if you scroll down, you're gonna see a bunch of access denied articles. On the wiki, access denied simply means there's no article there. So while you're writing your article designation, while you're writing it and getting critique, you want to write it in as SCP XXXX because you don't want to start writing for your article with a number in mind. And then three months later, when you've written it and critiqued it and all that, all of a sudden your number's gone and you have to change them all. So you, we usually pick our SCP number last if possible. But that is how you would figure it out is you go see which numbers are access denied on the main list. And that is how you figure that out. Great question. SCP authors should know that. Do, do, do. And then. I, uh, hops. I want to know one. I wanted to know one would artist blindness be an SCP or no two. If yes, what SCP class it would be. Artist blindness. I don't know the concept, but. I'll give it a quick Google and see if something comes up for me. Uh, Google, what you got to say to me? Oh, not Google W. You don't want my typo website? That's rude. Don't be so rude to me. I don't appreciate it. All right, artist blindness. What does that mean? Well, I can find blind artists, but I can't find what artist blindness is. Uh, you have uh, confuddled me. 
So I apologize. It seems that I will not be able to. Oh, it's basically we only see the flaws in your art, even though other people say it's good. Okay, well, if that's what artist blindness is, if that's what we're working off here, then the simple fact is, uh, I mean, I would call that more like imposter syndrome uh, myself because it makes you feel, but I guess that's slightly different. The point is that I was watching a video about this earlier from another creator, and the idea is that there's no such thing as a finished art piece. There is just art that you decided to say is finished. You will always be able to find imperfections. When I look at my old work, I see things that are cringe that I wish I had changed. And in fact, because it's on the SCP wiki, I can go change it. But I choose not to because it's kind of an artifact of where I was as an artist back then and how I've improved my writing since then. So, for instance, I'll give you one piece of Dr. Sherman cringe. In my tale, uh, Ignorance is Bliss, which I love that tale. It's, I think it's a great story. I really enjoy the setting. But at one point, when the characters are sparring, uh, they finish with the Mortal Kombat finish him as like a pop culture quip. And this is supposed to take place hundreds of years in the future. So I kind of justified it like, okay, well, maybe Mortal Kombat is like a classic thing that is still a nerdy reference that far into the future because like, you know, we reference Shakespeare still. But really, do I think Mortal Kombat is going to be Shakespeare level staying power in the future? I don't know, man. So, yeah, I feel a little cringe having done that in the story, but I'm leaving it as it is. Uh, it's the same problem in Star Trek when they have to mention things from our past because we don't know what pop culture is like in the future. That's another reason, because we don't know what it would be like in the future. So, uh, so yes, the point is, there is no final end to your art. There is no perfect art. The most important thing is to keep creating. Especially if, because the more you create, the better your content will be. So even your imperfect art will be better than the past art. I mean, God, look at Site42 TikTok compilations here on Site42 Red Division and start at number one. And whoo, those are painful to look at sometimes for me. Uh, the old stuff does not age well, but that's how all art is. And I've gotten a lot better since then because I kept making and kept making and kept releasing and releasing and moving on to the next project. So keep at it. Uh, I don't know what to put here. Is SCP-1471 Mallow readable? It makes me so frustrating, so frustrated that we have to hire so many monster and demon daters at the foundation because they're the only people who want to work for us. God. Hashtag annoyed in asexual. My word. So. No, because it's a spooky ghost that is always behind you and it never interacts with you. It just gets closer and closer. So, no, it's not. You nasty. Get back to work. All right, we have a hundred more people in the chat than we do likes. Fix that, Site42 staff. Let's get those likes up to match the viewers. I think we can do that. I don't think that's a hard goal to reach. Continuing on, 41 extra large, smash or pass SCP-1471. Do I have to say hashtag annoyed in asexual again? Pass. <sighs> Hello, uh, Crow's Helpline. What's your opinion about Do D Dr. Void? I guess you mean Detective Void. And if Spider-Man was in the SCP universe, how would you catch him? without using a loved one. Ah, too easy. So, number one, uh, Detective Void. Uh, yeah, they're, that company always rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, they, uh, they actually called me out in a comment because I was ragging on them so much once. But the way they ragged on me didn't make sense because I, I said that they were making cheap videos too quickly and they were doing low quality work and they didn't really care about the community very much. They weren't very community minded to the SCP. And uh, they got salty with me and said, we don't make money from our videos, which 
I know how much money I make in ad revenue for how much views I get. And they get a lot more views and a lot more subs than I do. I'm not even mad about people making money. We got to make money to make art. But I feel like they were never really improving their craft. They were just churning out as fast as they can, as much as they could. And they weren't really doing the stories justice. If you look at Love Radiger's series on the content farms, Radiger's series taking down Detective Void videos, you can see all the flaws, all the shortcuts that weren't... You can shorten the story for an animation, but you gotta keep true to the character, I feel like, is part of like the artistic integrity. And I don't feel like they did a good job. But apparently they've left SCP because they're trying to pursue their uh, own IP with Detective Void, which also feels disingenuous because you built a fan off of mostly SCP content and now you're gonna try and spin off on your own, but I don't know. I, I'm a salty old man and I'm a bougie, snooty artist, so what do I know? Uh, oh, and Spider-Man, I'm gonna catch him. I'm going to run and I'm going to catch him in my bare hands and I'm going to throw him in a box. Obviously. No, somehow we have to do an exit. Uh, Spider-Man is not an SCP, but if he were a video, because I gotta do more research on that one. Because, you know, he has the webs and whether we do the shooters or the non-shooters, we also have uh, the super strength, which gets super stronger every iteration. Uh, so as always, superheroes evolve and the containment procedures evolve with them. So that will need more research. If we wrote an article about an SCP... Oh, sorry, uh, Fable, thank you again for another dono. Uh, I gotta make sure I say the name. It's the nice thing to do in this streamer culture before I say the question. If we wrote an article about an SCP and used it in a project not affiliated with SCP, would we still be able to do that? So, great question about SCP copyright stuff. This is everything I deal with trying to make SCP movies down the line. So the idea here is that if you want to make an SCP... Uh, if, once you submit something to the SCP wiki, it is released Creative Commons. Even if you take it down, the version that was an SCP is still Creative Commons released. And the short version of that is it means that you still own the copyright to it, but Creative Commons is a way that anybody is allowed to reuse your content without having to ask you directly. So like me with SCP-3086, George the Chinchilla, I put him on the wiki, so now, Everybody has my permission to reuse George the Chinchilla at will. And because it's the special kind of Creative Commons that the wiki uses, they can also monetize it, which is cool. I would love that for them. That's why I related it, uh, released it through SCP. Uh, but because I still own the copyright, if they do not follow the rules of the Creative Commons, which are that they also have to release their work using my work with the same Creative Commons style license, if they don't follow the rules, I'm allowed to enforce my copyright and stop them from using stuff anymore. As long as they follow the rules, I can't do anything about it. So even like Detective Void, who a lot of SCP authors aren't fans of, because they are following the rules, we just have to grin and bear it. But that's the idea, is though if you made an SCP, you posted an SCP, and then you also used it in an off-site project, then you just have to release your off-site project via the same Creative Commons. That's how that would work. And of course, look at the SCP Wiki's licensing page. That will help with that as well. Because remember, not legal advice. SCP, fake doctor on the internet. Not a lawyer. Not a legal legal at all, in any sense of the word. Uh, Apache, what do you think it would take to kill SCP-682? Well, it's uh, pretty impossible. Unless the story really requires it to be warped to prove some other entity is even, even stronger. Well then, that's not going to fly. So, 6A2, undeletable. Unless any, uh... Unless the author decides it's that way, but most of the time when the author decides it that way, it reads more like they are just kind of hand-waving it than doing a real logical time with it, because the whole point is that it is very hard to destroy. So if you want to destroy SCP-6A2, you got to make it very story-wise interesting. That's what I'll say about it. Uh, Hops, thanks. I really wanted to know. Love the videos. Uh, thank you for the thank you tip, and I'm glad you enjoyed my answer. Also, 600 viewers in the chat. 
That is a new record for Dr. Sherman's office hours. Make sure to like the stream to catch those likes up to the concurrent viewers. Way to go, Site42 staff. You are killing it today. Uh, Fable, hashtag annoyed and asexual is my motto with most people, lol. Now, so, just to be pedantic, mine is annoyed in asexual, like in the voice of an asexual, annoyed in asexual. But yes, that is a joke I made up on the Site42 TikTok because of all the gender bent plague doctors. And so, because I always yelled at them like an angry researcher and I did not uh, hubba hubba all over them and I get mad at all the demon daters and the monster fuckers, uh, that is why Dr. Sherman is hashtag always annoyed in asexual. So, uh, Soul, thank you for the 199 dono just to say hi. We appreciate your support of the Site42 site, <laughs> the cause. Desk, uh, please consider joining Site42 Red Division, TikTok, and Site42 on Patreon. Get a shout out on Victory Fridays. Thank you, Moderator Desk, for shouting out the cause. We appreciate all aid in our quest to become the strongest Site SCP movie making TV film studio out there. I mean, right now there isn't one. So if we get there, then we are automatically the strongest. So it's great. Soul, thank you for your second dono. What is your favorite SCP? And two, any tips on YouTube? So this is the first time I've seen it asked today. And so I will say what I always say. I always announce my favorite SCPs at the end of the stream, which will be in about 18-ish minutes. So if you stay that long, you'll hear my favorite SCPs or check the end of my previous streams because I say it at the end of every stream. So with that in mind, thanks for sticking around. Your other question though, any tips on YouTube? It's always the same answer. It's create, create, create. Just like I said to our artist friend earlier, you got to start making videos. You got to start working on your craft, like reading, uh, watching other YouTubers you want to be like. Uh, for me, I follow a lot of what Markiplier and MatPat do in the field and how they make film and how they run their channels. Uh, obviously, no creator is perfect. Everyone does good and bad things. But those two creators, I, they have a great trajectory and they do good work overall and they run businesses with their channels and that's what I'm trying to do. So I'll follow in the examples of channels you want to be like. Uh, be good. Don't do evil. Uh, try to work with the community because you help people in the community. People in the community want to help you. We all grow together. We, I, it's the old saying, a rising tide lifts all ships. So if we all work together, we will all get bigger. This is why I help other SCP artists. This is why I uh, commission animations from The Offshoot, who's a new SCP animated show that you should check out because The Offshoot's pilot episode is really good. It got them like 10K subs in a week. And they're doing animations for me, which I then get more people to their channel. And of course, I pay them because we support artists here. Whew. But yes, make videos, do writing, learn about filming, uh, because writing your videos and filming your videos, those are skills that you have to learn through practice and study. And that'll help you be a good YouTuber. Starguard11, thank you for your first donor of the channel. Dr. Sherman, can you adopt me, please? Well... As far as I can tell to the SCP community, I'm either a father or a daddy. I can't tell which. But all who need a site director, father figure, research boss, uh, I'm here for you, I guess. 284, 284 with the chat and likes. Perfect match. Perfectly balanced as all things must be. Good work, team. Oh, and now it's up to 417 viewers. Push those likes higher. Let's balance it again. All right, Fable. So could I still monetize it under Creative Commons? Also, thanks for answering all my questions so far. Love your content, been binging it recently. Well, I try to get all the super donos uh, answered as fast as I can. They, on days when they are, when I'm only on mobile, they fade away really fast. But because I'm at home, I can answer more thoroughly because I got a nice list up here on the desktop. So with that in mind, uh, you're quite welcome. And yes, uh, certain Creative Commons allow you to monetize your work. Uh, so you got to make sure the project that you're working with allows it. SCP does allow for monetization of SCP works. So feel free. Crabmaster, thank you for your first dono to Site42. Hey, just curious, what would the SCP Foundation do if they knew about the backrooms and how would they contain the entities? 
I think I've made an a, a backrooms is not an SCP on the Site42 Black Division, which is TikTok. Remember, Site42 Red is YouTube, Site42 Blue is Twitter, and Site42 Black is TikTok. So, when you uh, look at the back rooms, I mean, the problem is that Async has already got dibs on it, and we keep getting a turf war with them. But also, I mean, we contain the Infinite Ikea, which is very similar, because there's only one entrance. But you can no clip from anywhere in the world. That's really hard to f find, let alone contain. And so, really, we could investigate it by opening a door like Async did, but containing it, uh, that's a little hard. Uh, Dakota, thank you for your first dono to Site42. Never seen your vids, but love SCP content. Did a quick look into your channel, found all good content. Keep up the good work. Welcome to the Site42 staff, Dakota. We are happy to have bigger and better team for more and more SCP content down the line. Victoria, what makes Markiplier and MatPat SCP? Ha ha ha. So, those two I made jokingly to, uh, well, I made a MatPat is not an SCP in the Game Theorists, where I said they were like a weird hive mind who ruins your childhoods and makes terrible theories uh, as a joke, but also they were doing a charity stream at the time, so I decided to give them some uh, hype and praise because they were doing a good thing and raised millions of dollars, I think. And uh, Markiplier, he's just crazy. You look at his videos on TikTok, he is bananas and is always doing something weird. And yeah, that going in a box. Starguard, yay, if 682 had kids, what would the foundation do? Make more acid bats. Bah! Keep them locked up. Keep them burning. Burn the children. <laughs> Dr. Sherman, 2023. Burn the children. <laughs> Hops Hooker, thank you for your dono again. Get in the box. Well, number one, the anomalies all get in the box, of course. Oh my gosh, six more likes to make it 311, 311. Hit that like button. Let's perfectly balance a second time in one stream. We can do it. Uh, well, technically speaking, I mean, yes, we put all anomalies in a box. And also, I'm currently in a box because this, I will move my camera for a moment, is my Site42 audio recording booth. And so... This is quite the box that I'm currently in. So, uh, you're welcome. I got in the box. Congratulations, you win. Thank you for your contribution. Hey, Gerald Productions. I like SCP-096. He gives me tea and biscuits. That's your first dono? And you tell me that you domesticated 096? How did you even do that? Uh, this is... This is sussy. I think you're lying to me. I think you're a sussy baka. Oh, that's the end of the supers. I get to go back to the regular chat for a bit, which is still flying like a hurricane. Oh, my word. Oh, we are in our last 10 minutes here. I heard that the tree screamed. You did not. Your name's I'm a tree. You're lying to me to get my hopes up. I will not be fooled by your tree conspiracy. That tree will scream. And specifically SCP-4521. It's not about all trees. It's just about that one tree. That one tree. Can SCP-3812 kill SCP-682 and or SCP-001 the Scarlet King? Yep. Meta narrative. All it would have to do is delete the SCP wiki. Both of them die. That's the power of being too meta for any power scaler to have to deal with. Uh, where was that next person? I saw something I wanted to see. Reminder while I'm looking for the question I wanted to look at, that channel members of Site42 get access to our cool Finger Guns Dr. Sherman badges, as well as the Dr. Sherman emojis, and we are soon adding... SCP-999 and the uh, Josie the Half Cat emojis to the chat. So if you want cool SCP emojis commissioned from an SCP artist, make sure to join our membership. Your opinion on adding a Quebecois French branch? I am... I'm unfamiliar 
with Quebecois French, but I feel like I've heard things about them. And I've heard Quebecois. I mean, I'm gonna completely be ignorant here because I don't know anything about Quebecois French, but I felt like, aren't they like the rednecks of Canada? Like they're the South of Canada. They're the Florida men of Canada. I mean, I say this as a Florida man, game recognizes game, but is that right? I don't know, man. Uh, as long as they will not ruin the foundation by existing, I mean, more branches means more containment boxes and I always love more boxes. I mean, who's to say we don't already have one? That's just kind of the stuff that happens. We have branches everywhere. Let's see. Uh, that's what you get when you come to a Site 42 stream. Stay for, come for the SCP content, stay for the Quebecois slander. I don't know, man. Uh, Fable, love the background, rocking out to lo-fi is great. So, uh, number one, yes, lo-fi is always great. B, this is specifically a, oh, we switched over to lo-fi video game beats. I did not know that. You see, I was on earlier an SCP, Night Shift at the Foundation, SCP lo-fi beats to chill and relax to. And that's where I'm going back to. But sneak peek, we're working on a Dr. Sherman lo-fi beats to chill and study to in animated by a friend of mine who's an animator, as well as uh, music by an SCP musician. So keep an eye out for that. It's going to be really cool if we can ever get it done because life stays busy and we all have work. So we're working on it. Robin St. Pierre, I do not know what a bicoline is. Ergo, I do not know if the article would be a good idea. But as long as I'm chilling here and I don't have any supers to look at, although I just got one, I'm going to finish this question before I look at it. What is a bicoline? Have you always dreamed of being a Viking, an elf, or fearsome pirate, or other fantastic characters? Well, as a Florida man, I am at least 125th pirate by law. That's what you get for being born in Tampa, the pirate capital of, I guess, Florida in the country. We have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in a pirate parade. So, uh, okay, so it's a LARP, I guess. Cool. LARP is cool. Um, so what you're looking here is a, making a fantasy SCP stuff. And so there's a lot of that kind of stuff. I mean, you couldn't do Beekaline because Beekaline's a thing already exists. But you'd be able to make a vibe-adjacent story that included those characters. I know there's one SCP article written by Dr. Samarian where the multiversal SCP foundations get in a war with each other and they all become sci-fi pirates. Yeah, sci-fi pirate SCP does exist. So you can do that. Uh, the sale, the salmon server. Hi, relatively new viewer here. How much of a chance would the foundation have against the horned serpent of monument mythos fame? Thank you for your first dono to site 42. And with monument mythos is another thing that I've heard of, but I just have never had a reason to look it up. Monument mythos horned serpent. What? Entity be you. I'm going to look at the Monument Mythos wiki because that's the first one that came up. I don't know if they're good or not. Um, Horns of a mysterious entity that exists beyond the traditional three-dimensional structure. Directly responsible for the slaughter of countless immigrants and the sudden surge in special trees. Well, I already hate them now. And indirectly responsible for the actions of the American government in opposition to it. The creation and actions of the Air Force One Angel, as well as the end of the world, making it the ultimate evil of the Monument Mythos universe. 
Mindless force of nature acting solely on instinct. This couldn't be further from the truth. It is calculating and highly manipulative. Keenly aware of its own nature is shown when it uses its supernatural properties to purposefully slip into Ferdinand de Lesseps' mind. All right, I'm going to scroll down, down, down. History, 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 history. Trivia. So, that's a lot. Um... So we deal with outside entities like the Scarlet King and different things like that. So, and we are a very worldwide organization with a lot of anomalous stuff going on and Scranton reality anchors. It doesn't seem, it, it has like direct and indirect and possession stuff, but I think it could be a nice little cat and mouse game between the two of them. But I think unlike many ultimate entities, I think the foundation would have a decent chance against that one. Uh, Fable, dang, gotta find SCP Lo-Fi now. Hell yeah, you do. Enjoy it. Mr. Icelandic. Thank you for your dono to the channel. Hey, Dr. Sherman, mind telling me why there are no SCPs located in Iceland? Do you have an anomalous field that keeps them out or something? First of all, places that have an anomalous field that keeps anomalies out, first of all, that's an oxymoron because then it is anomalous, even if it keeps anomalies out. But I'm going <coughs> to cough first. No, don't go to the SCP wiki. Go to Google first. I want to go to Google, have a sip of my anomalous fluid. Three minutes left on stream. Holy cow, I'm getting close to the end here. Iceland, SCP. So, 2436 is in Iceland. So, there is at least one anomalous village in Iceland. Uh, what else we got? Four, three, six, six. Avian organisms, anti-memetic camouflage. Iceland. So yes, there are multiple anomalies in Iceland. This is what I tell y'all guys all the time. When I want to look up SCP knowledge that I don't know, I go to Google, I type SCP and word, whatever word that is. Because then we can see, most of the time, get a pretty good sense of where things are. So yes, there are Icelandic anomalies. Uh, so, good to know, and now you know how to find out for yourself later. Night Owl, thank you for your first dono to the Site42 Red Division. What would happen if SCP-049 ate a lemon? Then it would have a zesty aroma. Drifter's Hideout, thank you for your do first dono to Site42 Red Division. If a person is dating an anomaly before they are captured, would they be contained with them? More likely, they would be... Uh amnesticized. They would be amnesticized or given a cover story that they are uh, that they were killed or left or moved away or something. Something where they would never hear from them again. Uh, very easy. Uh, can SCP-999 play Fortnite? Ask Hey Gerald Productions. Thank you for the dono. Uh, no, it doesn't have hands. <laughs> you guys are fun with your questions. I enjoy this. Oh, we have 343 three likes. We have fake God likes. That's right. Fake God, I said. 343 three is a liar. He is not God. I don't believe it. It's a conspiracy. The real true God of SCP is SCP-5320. Our Lord and Savior, the longest fish that just goes on forever. So, we have reached the end of my time for today's office hours. I thank you so much for sticking with me. Fable, you're welcome for the stream. It has been fun. I enjoyed myself very much, and I'm glad you guys had such good questions today. So, let me end the way we always end, with uh, my favorite SCPs, of which I name six of them each stream. My favorite SCPs on the wiki as of right now are SCP-3999, SCP-3043, SCP-008-J, SCP-Spooky-J, SCP-5175, SCP-5031, that's six, because the answer is seven, SCP-5320. Seven favorite SCPs, I'll say it one more time. 3999, 3043, 008-J, SCP-Spooky-J, SCP-5031, SCP-5175, and SCP-5320. And so, with that... This has been Dr. Sherman's Office Hours. I am so pleased to have hung out with you guys this afternoon before I'm on to my next thing, which is 
rehearsal for a Shakespeare production. Remember that if you want to see the Shakespeare production and you live in San Francisco, it's the weekend of November 10th. So you can just come and see me perform Shakespeare in San Francisco. If you don't live in San Francisco, you can run to my Beacons link in the description of this stream. And the top two links, one of them is a VOD donation link. You donate $20 to the theater company that's putting it on, you get a VOD after the performances of the show, which would be very cool of you to help out a new independent theater company that I'm working with. Uh, plus, it'll help them put on future shows, maybe work with me on future shows. And then... What else was I going to say? Ah, yes, of course. Do all the normal YouTube things. Like the stream like videos on the channel, watch, subscribe, become a patron, become a member. The benefits are different. Both have early access at certain tiers and you get the emojis on the channel membership. So pick whichever one makes you happier. I think it's that, what's the phrase I'm looking for? That you get the emojis as a member, so, but you get cheaper early releases on the Patreon. We have it balanced the best we can. There's a lot going on over there. So... With that in mind, as I finish up here, with one last little bit of typing, uh, let me answer the very last Super Chats if I can. Uh, how would you contain the entity from DVD? We've got a series of that. I've got a friend of mine who's very big into DVD lore because I'm not, and they are unfortunately a member of the Serpent's Hand, or at least their twin sister is. But uh, that researcher is doing that over on the TikTok, and as we get they go through all the killers. We'll eventually get to the entity, so stay tuned for that. We're going to break that up. And what would you do if every tree except 4521 started screaming? Oh, uh, sorry, that was Gaggin's first donation, so thank you for that. And Pancake Dragon, I would be so mad. If all the other trees started and just 4521 didn't, it's very rude. Very rude. Very contrarian of it. But therefore, thank you all for joining the stream. I hope you enjoyed Offers Hours. I'll see you at the next one, whenever that may be, very sporadic. Thank you, and have a good rest of your day. And they say that time goes rushing past, but it seems so slow. And you see it blur around you flying, but it takes too long seems so slow and you say the time goes rushing by but it seems so slow to me and you see it blur around you flying but it takes too long it seems so slow to me cause time keeps dragging on Dragging on and on and on and on.